Okay, this is the juicy one, Juventud Guerrera, and for, I'm for about to do an interview with Hannibal TV. So stay tuned, stay juicy, stay focused, stay strong, because this is for about to get really juicy and loosey. Cut one. <laughs> this is Hannibal here from the HannibalTV.com, and I am with former WWE, WCW, triple a superstar and he's wrestled everywhere anywhere you can imagine he's been there juventud guerrera thank you for uh, to us today no thank you for having me here like uh uh it's been uh honored to be here in canada and and well i'm ready to do this uh interview with hannibal tv to uh, first of all to be uh clear my real name is hannibal without the age just like uh, the, the no i don't know if i want to take call it normal or just without the age in a in a it is an italian name that it actually it's come from a warrior italian warrior so actually it just fits perfectly with myself so anyways yeah very happy to do this so your dad must have named you that he was a warrior himself he was a wrestler Could yeah you tell us a little bit about uh, some of your dad's accomplishments oh well my my dad is uh it's a tough guy. It's a very uh, unique, unique kind of people. Um, me and him, we got a long story, just not just because he's uh, uh, We are both Sagittarius, you know, and uh, we uh, we were born, he was born in December, I was born in, 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 in November 23rd. And uh, we have a lot of things in common, but, um, but there's something there's always something being there that uh it's been really uh a special bond in a very so much different ways that it's it's very hard to explain but it's uh, uh bottom line it's it's uh, uh i love my dad obviously and uh yeah it's just just very some of those strange situations in a way you know with family stuff was there any favorite match of his growing up as a kid that stands out to you um right at the back yeah the the we have a few with uh ray mysterio his it wasn't his dad it was his uncle but that was really such an amazing uh run to be able to do like championship matches with them and uh and and uh yeah that was awesome that was really really amazing and then all the of on the other side we were like doing matches too with the hijo del paraguayo rest in peace and, and his dad too uh and uh and you know we were in like that type of hero that uh i don't know everything was just meant to be i guess in a way was it your dad that trained you for wrestling yeah no completely but uh in a way uh, yeah he he teach me the, the the more important things in the in, in wrestling basically no that no 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 like the 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 a b and c you know what i mean when you're like start in the business i was learning from other teachers but uh but then he always like he he, he kind of like uh he uh he always took the best of me, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the difference in training for Lucha Libre than American style wrestling when you're learning? Is it more difficult or more complicated because uh, there's so many spots involved in Lucha matches? I don't know. I mean, for me, it was, uh, it's such a different different styles. Um, uh, the, uh, the American style with the Mexican style. You know, first of all, because uh, here everybody, uh, uh, they gotta do attack and respect the tag and 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 believe and and make and make make the story from there from there and uh and it's it, uh, it's just different in mexico we don't there's basically no rules it is rules but there's no rules you know so it's just it's uh but once you're like in a top level when when you're like a really really good wrestler you can wrestle with anyone anywhere in the world and you can have like the best matches because that's the beauty of wrestling because you can have like this chemistry with this like 
a, I don't know, like British guy, you know, and and you don't know the guy, like never met each other, but you know that instantly, you know, you have chemistry and you can do something really special. You had uh, early matches with Rey Mysterio, as you mentioned. Did you have chemistry with him right away? Oh yeah, that was one of those guys that I have like chemistry, like incredible chemistry like right at the back we were like doing crazy shit like crazy stuff it, it was amazing because i was like for me i always want to be a baby face but my dad didn't let me my dad was a, a heavyweight uh a heavyweight uh not a heavyweight a heel it was a heel all his life it was just doing it was a heel and uh and 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 for me, I start like when I was like 70 kilos, which is me, I don't know in pounds, but it, uh, anyways, it was, I was very light. So I was very more difficult for me to try to, to do a match and to, to set up a story, to, to do something for the fans. It was like, I have to do, put double effort because I was skinny and I have to be the heel. So I was like, oh my God, it was like, a test for me to be like a become a re better wrestler like that make me a better wrestler how to be a heel if I guess if you don't know how to be a heel you don't know nothing you know a lot of people they they only are baby faces you know and uh and then never uh, they don't know how to be a heel you know they don't have it they don't have that you know you need to have something that uh you need to put the in the ring so people understand that that you are like a real heel in I don't know, that's kind of like my character that I kind of like evolved into the Juventud Guerrera that is not, it's now, you know, and now a lot of people ask me, are you, even now, you baby first or you heel? I'm like, I'm just a wrestler, you know, I'm no baby first, I'm not heel, I'm a pure wrestler, you know, I, I uh, when I started the business, I became a wrestler from the bottom line, from um, amateur wrestling, Olympic wrestling, my my one of my mentors and teachers was Olymp Cacique Mara, which was a silver medal in 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 one of the Olympic Games. He was a, a, a Venezuelan guy, and uh, he teach me so well, you know, the the, the basic and the, and the and just 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 Olympic wrestling, and I just got engaged with that. I was like, you know, if you if you're a fight, because there's a very like there's two type of wrestlers the type of wrestler that is a fighter that can be a fighter and the type of wrestler that is not a fighter and and uh and and i think what i'm one of those like the guys that i can be a fighter but another guys because i know they they like i say the olympic wrestling i know how to, yeah. i know how to fight a guy I know, I, know, I know how to take down a guy i know how to hold down a guy bigger than me and that was my first te test. That, 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 that's for the record. When I did my, my, my exam, that was like old school, you know, back in 92, 91. When 92, before 92, yeah. Uh, when I, I have the chance to to become a wrestler, you need to have a, uh, need to have a, have a, a exam, a, a, a test with old school guys. And, and they test me with this big guy huge guy in uh in olympic wrestling and i put him down like right like it wasn't difficult for me and they were like very surprised and i was like able to do it and i was like uh because i have like i have the i have i have i develop you know i have the acknowledgement and i um uh, they teach me good so it was really really a pleasant thing that time that i now i can tell it and i can see it with pride, you know, that I did it, you know, it's like, it's, it's, and it's a very important message for the guys now, they want to make it, it's like, they only see like a high flying, like videos, you know, like even video games, or you can imagine whatever you can imagine and flip around and stuff, I mean, that's cool, you know, the pioneer of the high flying saying this is crazy, right, that's cool, I did it, I done it, and, and I, I can still improve and done stuff you know and, and moves and stuff like that but you know the basic you have you the new guy have to learn the the, the basic have to be a wrestler you know like this new kind of hybrid a uh, style of wrestling you know where you can see it with uh um with different kind of wrestlers now like uh um there's a 
Uh, the name is gonna come to me soon, but uh, anyway, there's some guys that uh, they are like UFC guys, like they know like really shoot and they throw kicks and they throw uh, like. Um, Cain Velasquez. Uh, well, Cain Velasquez is, is perfect example, but there's one guy in at NXT you, they, and they did a Survivor Series with the guy. Do you know the Olympic guy in WWE? Uh, I haven't seen it for so long. You know, you, you haven't yeah. seen. Oh my God, that was awesome. They were just wrestling yeah. they were just wrestling that was awesome they were just scrambling and stuff and i was enjoying that that that's that's wrestling you know and if you put that together with like action and high flying and, and a storyline and a few it's it's amazing you know like right now wrestling is 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 become so big so popular so amazing and and I'm, you know, I'm blessed that I'm still able to do it. You know, I'm, I'm like really happy to be here and uh, and talk about this. What was it like? Uh, you started wrestling pretty young, and you were famous already at a very young age in Mexico. Yeah, that was that was what happened. I was like right at the back. I started become famous. Like after two years, I got my first trip to Japan, and then. Uh, who was that for in Japan? Uh, for W A R, and okay. that's where I met for the first time um, uh, uh, Chris Jericho, and, and and on the tour it was Ultima Dragon, Chris Jericho, Jado and Jado. Well, they're from, from Japan. They're from Japan, but anyways, that was such a good trip. Ultima Dragon was there. He he was the guy to to bring us in the first place for that company. How did you like it over there in Japan? I like it. I like it. It's not my favorite, to be honest. That's why I don't. I don't. I guess I don't go there that much. I right. like. I like more like the Bri the British uh, scene. I was. I was going there for a long time for quite a few years. In the last year, I've been doing more like independent in the shows in the U.S. You went to ECW. You're very well known for your time there. Who was it that brought you into ECW? Uh, that was, uh, I guess God, <laughs> God, God took me there for, and, and a lot of people were involved, but, uh, uh, I think, you know, that was the destiny, that was destiny, you know, to, took me there and, uh, yeah. What was Paul Heyman like in those days? Uh, it was a very, uh, it was a very cool guy. I just got nothing but to say about the guy. He was always like respectful and very impressed for the work we, we were doing and uh and that was that was kind of unique when you went to wcw was that through conan or did eric bischoff approach you directly that was conan the first guy because the conan was the guy who was speaking english in the first place nobody in that moment that time it was able to speak english actually like i was maybe the first mexican guy who started speaking english the first one and um yeah and, and you know uh yeah because you know to break through through that era it was difficult you know it was not easy because but i always kind of like have the confidence in me to 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 to, to express myself to go out there and be if maybe in the beginning it was not easy for me or i was making mistake with the english and stuff but down the road i learned right so it, it's not gonna be forever you know so i was like able to to do it your first match was against billy kidman uh, any memories on working with him oh all, all good memories always good memories because uh we just like two kids having fun you know in the ring that was awesome we had so much chemistry he was a really good uh uh great chemistry with him awesome chemistry at Ultimo Dragon, you already brought it up. You're very well remembered. Uh, you won the cruiserweight title from him on the first episode of Thunder. Uh, any memories of winning that title in your oh, Can you imagine? Like that's that's for the story, right? That's for historical. Like being the first Thunder and uh, beat Ultimo Dragon. That's that's one of a kind. So I'm just grateful all the time. Grateful every day I wake up, I'm grateful. And all the time when I step in the ring, I'm grateful. When um, I step out of the ring, I'm grateful. When I finish this tour, I'm grateful. When I open my eye and close my eye, I'm grateful. 
So I'm grateful all the time. I think that's the way it has to be. Did they have you doing a lot of house shows in WCW? Oh yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, I was just doing, I was working like 24 <laughs> seven, nonstop, wow. nonstop action. And I was told that you have a story about the Nitro Girls. I don't know if you could say it on camera, but what have you? They were cool. They were cool. Like honestly, they were awesome. We have so much fun. Like so much fun together. Like I don't gonna go into detail. We all would respect each other, right? They have a family now. But oh my god, we have really lot, of, really good time. Like they were really a cute, cute, sexy girl. They were awesome. Like yeah. How is the party scene in WCW? Because we've heard everyone was partying. Well, the party, in fact, there was not a party if we're not involved, you know? Corn and Ray, myself, we were like the party of WCW. We were the, we were the bar, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was fun, man. I mean, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that I don't like. I'm so honest about life. You know, I'm so honest about leaving and how the way it has to be. Like a lot of people is so fake and so like, oh, I don't, I don't want people see me and do this and do that, you know. I like to have fun, you know. I like to live the life to the limit. And that doesn't mean that you're going to be crazy every day of your life. You just got to live it to the limit, you know, every way possible. You know, be grateful, be thankful. And if, if you can have a drink, fucking go for it. I mean, but be careful. You know, don't go out there and drive crazy and do that. I make a lot of mistakes in my life and I learn from it. I'm like really grateful because I learn from those troubles, you know, because that's the moment that it, it's been learning. And I mean, I can speak to this camera and tell everyone, you know, that it's, it's a learning process. Everything happened bad in your life. It's, it's a learning process. It's not bad. It's bad if you believe so, if you think so. But it's good if you change it, if you change it the way it has to be, in the way you, you, you core say so, you know, you, 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 you matrix, your soul, you, your sins make so, you know. It's like you, you can transmute everything in your life, you know. Bad can transmute in good. So uh, I'm really grateful for the bad that happened in my life. You know, because everything is, is just happening for a reason. And I did hear you say in another interview that that one bad thing that happened in Australia, nothing like that ever happened again with you. That was a one time thing, right? Oh, well, that was one of those guys, you know, that everybody going through that, have a big trouble in, in, on his life. Uh, and, and, and But you learn from it, you know, since that moment, I, I knew that what was the way to go for, you know, maybe, maybe another time another moment in another country another moment i i i i could have died right but i was able to 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 stay alive and and to talk about this and to say you know what that's not the ending of the world you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm still alive i can talk about it i can laugh about it i'm not proud about it but i'm happy at the moment i'm very happy right now that i can speak about this with all the trust that i know you know it's it's like you say like like you told me you know and what do you think when people are searching online and they find out and they find out about that they find out about other good things about it you know it's the pain of the point of view that you want to see it i mean i'm not like oh people are going to be thinking no i want to be an example for people you know i want to be a good example like nothing can bring you down nothing in the world can bring you down until you're dead or you die that's the moment that you can do nothing about it. But, but the moment you're here, you have to fight. Yeah. You have to fight. You have to be an example. You have to be somebody. You're not here just to be nobody. Everybody's special. Everybody has a meaning in life. But nobody understands that. Nobody can comprehend that, you know? Because we're living in a world that everybody tell you what to do, tell you what to say, tell you how to dress, tell you how to look. Everybody's judging you if you don't have a new car, if you don't have a, a money in the bank, you know. Yeah. It's just so stupid. That is like ridiculous stupid. And we live in a stupid world. And you brought up Chris Jericho. Everyone remembers your matches in WCW. Any memories of working with him? Awesome. All the time, awesome. That guy, it's awesome. It's... It's one of a kind, you know, it's one of those guys that, uh, 
you know, he brought my name in, in, uh, in this promo a couple of weeks ago. And it shocked me, and it shocked me, and it surprised me, and and it's like one of those things that is like everything goes around, it comes around, you know. Everything is it's just kind of like a a process, you know, and you gotta be just ready for it, you know, and be uh, grateful, you know, and fight for it, you know, for what you want and stuff, you know. So I think there's coming a lot of surprises for Juventud Guerrera, like. This tour means a lot to me in so many ways, you know, I got 45 years and honestly, I look like the best way I, I ever, I feel like the best way I ever feel like before. I don't feel like a lot of people when they have my age or when they even like a lot of friends, they say like when they were like 35 or 35 or 34 or 32, or even their people, they're 28, like, I feel old, or they feel like I'm getting older. Like, don't even say, I don't even say that word. That's not in my dictionary, you know? Yeah. I mean, my name is Juventud Guerrera. And it was while feuding with Jericho where you had to unmask in the mask versus hair mask. Did that take a lot of convincing for them to do? To have to finally take off your mask? I wasn't on the contract, on a contract. So I couldn't, like, I could, but I didn't. And uh, because I think, I, uh, it's because, no, because I think I was very, very young. I was just happy to be in the park and, and play with the boys, you know? I, was, I, I didn't want to beach around, I just want to have fun. So I was like, okay, and and and, 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 and maybe, maybe it took a banish, maybe. I don't know. It, it, anyways, it is what it is, right? Yeah. yeah. What was it like wrestling without a mask after wrestling your whole life wearing that mask and being so known as... That was awesome. That was awesome because I realized, oh, 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 I discovered a new, a new, a new, a new personality without the mask. I think my stronger personality is without the mask. I love the mask, and I think that's 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 my other my other me, right? And that's uh, and that's what I love about lucha. You know, I have like I can uh, I'm able to have like this character as the juice. And now I'm becoming like the maker. I don't, I'm, 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 you know, everything is evolving, you know. So you gotta transmute yourself in something, you know. And that's why I call myself the maker. And last thing for Chris Jericho, obviously you mentioned he brought you up in a promo. Would you ever consider doing something with AEW if they wanted to bring you in to do something there? You said you're still in top shape. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, I think uh, we're gonna be working on that. I think there's a uh, uh, the the path it's open. I think uh, there's a lot of uh, so many um, um, things that we can do. So many uh, history lines that we can go for. You know, so it's, it's it would be amazing. Now. It, it's uh, even Jimmy too. even Jimmy Jacob when he was like listen when he was listening to the crowd the, the response they were like chanting the Hubie's name, it was like, oh, I didn't expect that it was going to be like that reaction, you know? So, I think, uh, I think everything is happening for a reason. I'm just, like I say, just grateful and I'm just going to be, stay, stay on top of it, you know? We've always heard the stories that there was a lot of tension backstage in WCW. Were you, did you feel any of that from the very No, not really in WCW, honestly. WCW was like, oh, that was amazing. That was like no, no, no hold bars, you know. Nobody was holding me. Nobody like they just, they just uh, let me do whatever I want. I was able to do, you know. They were just in shock for the capacity and the and the and the the confidence that I show in the ring, in pay per views and. Monday night after after oh after after nitro nitro after nitro TV after TV you know I was constantly uh, being the best of the show you know I was the best I was the most I think I'm, I'm I could be the best, maybe the most underrated wrestler of the uh, has ever been could be you know and WCW for sure because you were definitely a big part of WCW you were known for the filthy animals groups there where you won the world tag team titles uh, any memories of of being part of the filthy animals that was awesome too because I was able to compete with these uh, big huge guys uh, 
yeah, we were like, we, me and Ray were the only like smaller guys. And, and wow, you know, to be able to compete with those guys and those guys, they were like, even not just working with us, they were learning from us. You know, they were like, wow, this guy, these two guys are amazing. I want to work with them, you know? And like, and when they, uh, when they were working with us, they were happy, we were having good matches. They were like so into it. And we break the mold, you know, we break something really special because before was just heavyweight. Nobody worked with, nobody wanted to sm work with small guys. No one. Or if they work, they were just fucking bashing them, you know. But with us, everything changed forever. Everything changed forever. For us, and that's why it's like, I need, I need another chance, you know, to go back and prove myself. That's not fair, you know. I've been like so underrated, you know, so underrated. And it's, it's not because I say so. It is a fact, you know. It is a fact. And I'm going to be fighting until the day I die to, to do another running, to do another, like, a big step and to close the circle. Whose idea was the juice gimmick? I think God too. <laughs> Everything is, 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 you know, I'm grateful. I think it's, it, you know, I think him. Really? And did you ever get any feedback from The Rock about it? Oh, no, he liked it. He you was, like uh, it? I got a story that I've been saying in different videos, but uh, I got a story that uh, he, um, he was in a, uh, I was going to Miami to have a connection and he was in the plane. So he was waiting for me outside the plane for like, honestly, like 20 minutes. And I make a lot of time because I, I saw him when I wake up and I saw him, he was like in front of me and I was like, oh, fuck, I don't want to see him because I was doing his promo. So I took a long time and when I went out, finally, he told me he was waiting for me. And now we have a chat and he liked the gimmick actually. So that was amazing. He, he, uh, he teach me a lesson that uh, he was very, very professional on the way to say it's like, we're in an in entertainment business. So if it is good, just keep doing it, you know, go for it. He, he liked it, so that was amazing. How did you like Eric Bischoff overall? Oh, well, I mean, like, it's not something that I like it, you know, it's like you work with people and uh, um, I think uh, when I work with people, with this kind of people, for me, it's, it's uh, I, I, I wanted to learn from them, from them, you know? I wanted just to get the best of them, you know? And, and I think Eric Bischoff is one of those guys, you know? He's a very smart guy. He did a lot in WCW. He was a very good character. He plays the, 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 the piano like no one. I mean, I mean the cameras and everything. He's, he's a very talented guy. And I know Vince Russo loves you. I think he has a crush on you from a video I saw. <laughs> But uh, what were your thoughts on him? <laughs> Vince Russo, he's a crazy motherfucker. He's a crazy guy. Well, I like him too. I like him too, and I'm grateful for for what the what he did to me. You know, he believes a lot in the juice. He was always pushing me and doing something with me. He knew that I was a a very entertainment part of of of, uh, of the show. So he always pushed me to this to the to. I, I can see he was always one of the guys to actually help me in WCW. Do you think they made a mistake releasing you? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think they make a, they did a make because they were putting like all the guys, all the people to they make a lot of mistakes. They they give them the chance to to stay in the company, to comprehend them, you know, to be like behind them. You know, and um, ev anyways, you know, it is what it is. Were you surprised WWE eventually bought them out? I guess not too many years after you released. Well, yeah, that was a big surprise. Like that was a big surprise because from there, like WWE just scale like to the limits, you know. So, uh, but now I think it's a it's the perfect time for a new. For a new breed of wrestling. You wrestled for Pro Wrestling Noah in Japan after your, uh, your WCW release. How was it working for them? They were a big company at the time. Uh, and you say Noah? Yeah. Oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. I have a lot of fun. I learned a lot. 
I was able to work with Maru Fuji Kenta. I was able to 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 you know to to learn from uh, Misawa, Kawada, and Osawa, and all those. Wow, some of the best wrestlers in the in the world. Like, wow, that was intense. That was awesome. That was really good. How was your experience with TNA? I was good too. That was actually pretty cool too. I was able to to perform in a in a in a very high uh, uh, um, level with a lot of guys like Teddy Hart and uh, and uh, Jerry Lynn and, and uh, Christopher Daniels, uh, uh, so many guys uh, that uh, I was able to to perform like really good top matches. We use Teddy Hart in our company here in Canada. What are your thoughts on him? Oh, he's my, I can say no, my, uh, one of my best friends in the business, definitely. He's a, such a sweetheart. A lot of people think he's crazy, but who is not crazy, you know? Who is like, everybody is just judging people like, oh, this guy is super crazy. This guy does this, does that. And like, we don't know what you do behind the door, you know? You don't know what you do behind your computer, you know? It's like, hello, you know? Everybody's crazy in this world. Like, everybody, you know? And everybody's good too, you know? It's like, we, we able to, to be able to, we're in the world that we're good and bad, you know? Yeah. Who was booking TNA when you were in it? Uh, TNA. Was uh, it still owned by the Jarretts at that point? Uh, yeah, it's it's right? yeah, that was the Jarretts. How do you like Jeff Jarrett? I like him. Yeah. Yeah. You surprised they put him in the Hall of Fame with all the heat he used to have with WWE? Well, they should put me in the Hall of Fame too. <laughs> Motherfucker, <laughs> the hell they're waiting for? Well, that brings us to WWE. Uh, who were the ones that reached out to you from WWE about coming in there? Uh, the, my 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 era with WWE, it wasn't the way that I was expecting. Uh, for so many reasons, so many. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, I, I want to be very politics, you know, with them, because you know, it's it's yeah. uh, it's uh, they're, 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 uh, they're. It wasn't the moment. It wasn't the time. It was just so many difficult situations that happened at the moment, and you know, uh, for me, it's like I don't want to bring like that bad energy to you know to me. It's like I'm good now. You know, that's all matters. I live the moment right now. When they signed you, did they have the Mexicals gimmick in mind already, or were they signing you just to sign you, and that was something they came up with after? No, 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 no. I was actually the guy to 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 to, to create the name of the Mexicals. Oh, really? Yeah. So you helped develop the idea. Yeah, that was me, Vince, Johnny Ace, and I think it was somebody else. In, in, in like right down the ring and uh it's like we need a name we're gonna put a we're gonna put you together like the three of you guys we're gonna make a team with the three of you guys. i think that's the best way that uh, we can push you guys and we were like okay and like any ideas could be for the name and i was like okay it just came out of nowhere i, I was just thinking what is cool okay cool is cool right yeah. so okay what about if you put mexico in english and we put mexicos and I say Mexicals, uh, and, and Vince is like, what? He couldn't understand. And, B, and, J, and Johnny is like, he's saying Mexicals. He's like, Mexicals, Mexico. Oh, fuck yeah, I love it. And right away told the whole team, you know, you got to put Mexico in the, in the screen and do the graphic and right at the back, we became the Mexicals at that moment. How did you get along with Super Crazy? That's guys? why I'm the maker. You oh, see yeah. that? Uh, like everything that's been happening that has been like influence for people uh, uh, creating moves creating styles creating music creating a lot of things you know I think uh, I was like for a lot of time I was like jealous in a way couldn't understand what was the situation to say but I was kind of like, yeah, why are these people is copying me? Why are these people is doing what I'm doing? Why are these people is like doing this? It's because 
you realize when you're like something like really special, it's, people is gonna follow you. People is gonna be want to be like you. Yeah. You know. So like I don't like it now. I understand. Now I understand why it's all of these things. Now you wrestled the BWO. We've interviewed all those guys. Uh, what was your opinion on working with them? BWO. Yeah. Uh, Blue Meaty. Oh. <laughs> No, that's no, good. That's good, man. Like, I wish they give us more time, more like, I don't know, more. Um, yeah, just more time to have fun and you know, be, be juicy in the ring. And you worked with Nunzio a lot there. How was he to work with? That was okay, but that was kind of I don't know. I was working first with Paul London. Yeah. And I have we have better chemistry with Paul London. And right at the back, they changed for Nuzio. And I was like, Nuzio? I was like, come on, no, please, no. I mean, I love Nuzio, but I was like, no, please, no, because I can do so much better with, with, Paul, with Paul London. Yeah. I don't know why they did that, you know? At WWE, why did you do that? I mean, like, I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, like, why you put some, I mean, like, you know, it's like, it doesn't make sense. And you won the cruiserweight title. What was? Uh, were you pretty happy to have that? Yeah, obviously, yeah. yeah. Obviously, yeah. You lost it to Kid Cash. They never really did anything with him. Uh, you think they could have done more with him? Uh, like I say, man. Like everything is in the past. It's gone, man. I yeah. can tell you a lot of stories and going back and this and that. And it's like it's gone, dude. It's like that thing is gone. I mean, it's like. Well, I'm gonna, I don't gonna, I don't gonna go back and breathe that energy. And like I'm all about energy, you know. And for me, energy is pure. And it's like, let's just stay juicy. Now you did have contact with uh, Rey Mysterio in WWE. Is everything good between you guys now? You, I know you've had ups and downs over the years. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but I think yeah, we're cool. We're cool. We don't talk too much, to be honest. But I think we're cool. Have you seen his recent push? He's feuding with Brock Lesnar. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see some of it, yeah. Do you think Kane has the potential to be a big superstar in wrestling from what you've seen of him so far? Uh, Kane Velasquez? Kane Velasquez? Yeah. I, 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 I think so. I hope so. I like the guy. What was your favorite memory of the Mexicals gimmick? I think just the... the, the, the the example or the promo or the uh, to be able to be like in the ring in the middle of WWE ring with the microphone the first Mexicans doing a promo I was the first I was able to be like the first one and they trust me and I was able to do it that was one of, that was one of my highlights you know that I can say it was it was awesome I guess for Rey Mysterio, you probably feel you had your best, maybe some of your best matches in ECW. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. And you were released by WWE, but it was kind of sudden. Were you surprised that they made that decision because you guys were getting over still at that point? Uh, like I said, you know, there was so many, a lot of things that was happening with the Mexicos. There a lot of people know, a lot of people don't know, a lot of people... Quite a few people know, and I just don't want to go into the detail because, like I said, you know, it will happen. What happened, you know? It's like right now, I'm 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 cool with these two guys, super crazy, and and in that time we didn't were cool. We were like just fighting for, like I said, I don't want to be going to details, you know. It's like fuck it, that's gone, that's in the past. I just want to look for the goodness in the future. What would be your dream match in WWE now if you could go back? Obviously, Rey Mysterio, that would be one. And so many guys, like, I mean, I was impressed about, after all these years, like, uh, you know, like Sasha Banks, like, even, like, all of these guys there in WWE, they spoke highly about me, you know? They respect me. I don't, some of those guys, I don't even know that. But they, like, they, I was inspired, like, Seth Rollins, uh, uh, Strickland, uh, you name it, man. You name it. Everybody's been has been influenced by the Jews, and I'm like so uh, fired up about it. You know, I'm like 
God, it just needs to get back, you know, it needs to do something more and to need to be fighting this new generation, these new guys. It has to be happen. It needs to be happen. The world's needed. What I need you, it. What do you think about AEW from what you've seen of it? Speaking, I of think that? it's great. I think it's uh, they teaching a lesson to WWE how to, because they were the master of productions, right? In in, in on TV and, and the the way they move camera and the focusing and, and, and the in and out and all that. My God, these guys are doing incredible, and I think they know it. WWE know it. So I'm I'm very happy for the wrestling. For, for for WWE too, because I know they're gonna get better. They're gonna try to step over to again, and and even this, and and, and then in the, hopefully they'll become another company, and, and and you know that's why I'm doing my own company. Check it out, La Nueva Lucha Libre. Is there a website? If you oh, want to follow? Uh, uh, triple W Lucha Master dot com, uh, or or here. Check this out. Uh, this is behind this T-shirt is the social media of my company. So check it out. That's why I'm wearing this t-shirt. Because I wanted to show you what the juice is doing. I'm doing my own promotion in Mexico. Because after all these years, I want to create something, not just for the juice, you know, it's something for wrestling. So um, I'm promoting my own company in Mexico. Is Psychosis involved in it at all? Uh, I haven't booked him, but I've been booking super crazy in my company, quite a few shows. I saw a clip online of you doing something, I think it was a few years ago, with Vampiro in AAA. Did you ever have a feud with him over the years? Well, I have a few in a way with him in WCW. Uh, a little bit. And a little bit in the, in the, lo in the, in the office, in the locker room. Cause he started doing my Kubi driver. And... I was like, hey, you're doing my finish, right? It's like, what the hell are you doing? And then he continued doing it. So I got to go to the office and talk to Terry Taylor. So we got to actually discuss this together. I'm like, no, I don't want to. That's my move. Like, oh, yeah, but you can. You have too many moves, Hubi. You can change another move. I'm like, no. You know, that's not fair. That I mean, I create that move, you know? And, and when people tell me, oh, it was uh, uh, the Japanese guy. The Japanese guy does the same. Well, I never, I never saw him. You know, I was doing it in Mexico too. I, I kind of like think in my mind, and then he was doing it too in Japan. But so that's, so that's why it's like I did it in, in W, and I don't want to, no one to do it in front of my face, right? That's respect. Yeah. So. Did you get along with Vampiro? Oh yeah. That? After after that, yeah. After that, we have some other shows, other matches in Europe. Really, really cool too. Uh, and uh, yeah. Since your last WWE run, you also wrestled for WWC in Puerto Rico and you won a title there. How was your experience there? Uh, yeah, I remember, yeah. Yeah, I mean, everywhere I go, it's, you know, after all these years, yeah, I try to <laughs> promote and take care of myself. If you could have one Lucha tag team partner, who would it be? Right now? Yeah. Oof, I don't know. Maybe Will Osprey. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fucking perfect luchador. What happened with you and Jack Evans? Ah, uh, we have a fight. We have a fight back then in Mexico. But uh, but we always cool. We cool, super cool. Now I book him into my shows. <laughs> you know, I give him work now. You know, He's like I'm not. I'm not. I'm, a, I'm not one of those guys. Like, oh, I'm gonna have this. But feeling in me, you know, forever. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that. That's terrible. I mean, I, and I feel bad even to say fuck that. It's yeah. terrible to say even fuck that. You know? That's awful. Did you have many backstage fights in your career? Uh, I have one with him. And I have another one with... Uh, mm, rest in peace. Uh... Uh, Abismo Negro it was okay. a it was an old timer luchador in Mexico. I have a big fight with him in the locker room. Yeah. What was that all about? Just, uh, you know, he 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 disrespect me in in a, in a way that I I would I would I was not able to 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 step back. You know, it's, there's limit, right? 
So I didn't step back and and I fight the motherfucker. Everybody was surprised. They were like, fuck, who is fighting this motherfucker? He was bigger, bigger than me, stronger than me. Fuck this guy. Don't nobody respect when you when when you know I'm not a fighter guy. Or to be honest, I'm not. I'm a very like peaceful guy, and I've been learning that. You know, right now I'm a more than I'm a politic guy. You know, I, I'm I'm a, I like to to you know to put the ideas in the table and to to be able to confront and to make facts and and to to work with them. Any thoughts about Silver King? Rest in peace my friend that's all i can say he i think didn't he pass away in europe you were wrestling over in europe for quite a long time too yeah, yeah. um that's an unusual you wouldn't necessarily think that uh, luchadors would be popular there how was your experience overall well just lucha libre became very popular in the last 10 years you know i've been traveling in the last more constantly in the last 15 years to europe you know all europe you know france belgium uh, England, uh, Spain, Malta, um, so many countries in Europe. Yeah, I've been, I've been, yeah. You had a famous XPW juice bar promo that you did in Philly. Uh, did you expect people to be still passing around the video of that? No, I mean, well, no, not really. That was awesome. It's still awesome right now. It has such a, a like, a s millions of views, that promo, and it's just, I, 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 I like it, you know, I think it was pretty juicy. Now, I haven't uh, personally heard this, but I had some fans that wanted to know if you've heard that uh, k Dog has been talking negatively about you. Mm. Well, that's the way he is, my friend. He's a very negative person. So I didn't expect less from him. I see. And you just said uh, you're basically running your own company now. You're not wrestling for AAA much anymore. If people want to book you, uh, where could they look you up? Oh, they can uh, look me up on my on my on my website. It's triple w luchamaster dot com. On my social media, Juventus Guerrera, just the way the way it's just it is. And um, yeah, just um, on my email x. XTB. It's been really interesting this tour. Like I, it's, it's been, it's been really, really. It passed away. Like today was the last day, and it passed like, just like that. It's just like that. I have so much fun. I have so much, a lot of stories to tell. How many more years do you think you're still going to be wrestling? Uh, uh, I, I, I would say five years more. But that, that I don't want to do more. I want to do other things. I want to maybe still competing. I want to. I think I'm gonna be able to do maybe like able to ten more years. I can. I can be able. But I want to do like maybe another five years and and and, uh, and go from there. Did you have a hero in wrestling that you looked up to? Yeah, Eddie. Eddie. Yeah. Were you close with him? Yeah, obviously, very close. Have any uh, story about Eddie Guerrero you could share with us? No, nothing, man. Well, a lot, but nothing, man. Just it was a sweetheart. <laughs> and I guess it just happened today that they fired uh, Ted Hart from MLW. Uh, Teddy Hart? Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I think it, I think because he's doing these crazy videos online, so. You know, I was actually about to call him and, and say, hey, you know, it's like, it's very delicate social media, you know, yeah. and when you don't know how to, how to, how to present yourself out there, you know, it could, could be difficult. And would you ever consider a company like MLW, one of the lower companies like uh, Impact, MLW, NWA? I don't know. I, I, I have, I, I. I hear not some very good things about MLW, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. The longest they pay me, and I'm happy with what they do with my, with my, with my, with my persona, with my years of territory. I'll be happy to do it. Any thoughts about Ricky Banderas? 
No, but not, not, yeah, I was like the first guy to actually uh, if, uh, took took in, in like uh, for a tour in Mexico. That was, you know, I was like, because nobody took, was taking care of him. So I was like, I was uh, be able to to put his uh, first girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> in Mexico. Is the heat that I guess there was some heat with you and X Pac? Is that all over with now? Yeah, it's all over. And what are your thoughts on Mil Mascaras? Uh, respect. You think obviously you have another U.S. run in you? Yeah, obviously. I think so. And is there any particular reason why you weren't in Lucha Underground? I don't know. I think politics and a lot of bullshit around too. A lot of people wanted to see me. That 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 was like, you know, could it be like a really really fun for the fans. And what was your best match with Chris Jericho? All of them. I enjoy all of them. And favorite match? Not a memorable match. The one with the mask against the, when Were I love the mask. Yeah. That must have hurt you in some way having to take that mask off at that moment. I guess so, yeah, in a way, yeah. Could be. Could be. And you told us uh, your company's email. Uh, is there any social media you want to plug here or anything for the fans watching? Well, just like I said, just the triple W, luchamaster.com. Like, I, I'm going to put this again on my back. Check it out. This is the social media of my company. And I've been doing really, really interesting stuff. I've been developing really new characters, new new luchadors. One of them is Superstar, and the other one is El Luxionista. And, and I'm creating more, 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 more personas, lucha personas. And we haven't really brought this up, but you have been on the road 31 days wrestling just about every night, I think every night, yeah. uh, all over Canada. What's been the hardest part of this tour and what's been the best part? I think everything has been good. Everything has been good. Excellent. I'm grateful. And no injuries? No injuries. <laughs> Thanks God, thanks God. That was so nice that I was like really like, oh my God, what's gonna be this? What's gonna be this night? What is gonna be tonight? What's gonna be tomorrow? But I was just happy, you know. I was just happy to everything is experience, and I was just pray, if, you know. I always pray before my matches. I always pray before, you know. I just yeah, I just do it. So uh, we asked uh, this question to all of our wrestlers, but I know you're really an expert on ladies from what I've heard from your reputation, but what town has the best uh, wrestling groupies? And I know Mexico. <laughs> everywhere, you can find groupies, everywhere. <laughs> Do I dare ask this, how many uh, hundreds of women you've probably been with? Is it above 500? Oh, well, just leave it like that. In every country, you know, <laughs> every country, Asia, uh, America, South America, Canada, <laughs> you know, everywhere. Uh, that reminds me, uh, Ric Flair claimed that he's been with 10,000 women. You were in WCW with Ric Flair. Uh, oh, yeah. Memories of him. Oh, he's the man. He is the man. I love him. He's uh, one of a kind. He's uh, so grateful to be able to uh, be in the locker room, be in the same company, be in the same moment, you know, party with him, hanging out with him, traveling with him. He's a man. Is he as crazy as people say when he's partying? Nah, it's everybody, like I say, everybody's crazy, you know, in a way, you know. I mean, there's a moment that you you go out there and that you, you, you just lose your mind for a moment, right? In, in a way, you lose your mind in a happy way, you know. You don't have to lose your mind in a, in a bad way, you know. Just everybody's outrageous, you know. Let yourself go. Be happy. Are you surprised WWE's using him on TV now in his 70s when they used to make fun of WCW using him when I guess he was in his 40s or 50s? Yeah, life, life in wrestling, it's, it's, a, it's a different world. So, Was Hulk Hogan good to you as well? Yeah, he was good. He called me Mr. Juice. 
<laughs> yeah, how you doing, Mr. Jude? He was uh, he was cool. And finally, what's your best advice for aspiring wrestlers out there that might be watching this? Never surrender, baby. Never surrender. Any final thought to close this out with? Stay tuned and stay juicy. Um, and more importantly, be grateful. It's Juventud Guerrero versus the Blood Hunter here. The Canadian Wrestling Elite Show. El Casador de Sangre, aka the Blood Hunter, wasting no time in clobbering the legend here, Juventud Guerrera. Guerrera manages to take advantage of the situation here, unleashes with his own chops on the giant here, this massive Puerto Rican wrestler known as El Casador de Sangre, aka the Blood Hunter. Tremendous size, tremendous power, but tonight he's facing off against a very experienced professional wrestling legend here. Juventud Guerrera, known for his time of course in WCW, but has wrestled in just about every country you can name and has accomplished many, many things in the sport of professional wrestling. The fans here are very excited to see Juventud Guerrera. We don't know much about El Casador de Sangre, but what we've seen thus far since he's uh, made his appearance here in Canada as of August has been nothing but a bloody massacre that he's unleashed on just about everyone he's faced off most recently King Haku the legend Haku El Casador de Sangre demolished the legend Haku and it was unbelievable goes for the big, el big elbow moving two ducks under throws him to the ropes El Casador de Sangre showing that agility as the big man but getting drop kicked into the face by Juventud Guerrera again using his asset which is years of experience years of uh, knowledge that he's acquired here smaller man but I'll tell you what his experience and his relentless passion for for pro wrestling is certainly paying off here as we're seeing him face a man three times his size look at the vicious kick to the chest and he's choking the the, the juice right out of the juice folks ramming that size 16 boot right across the throat of Juventud Guerrero the referees having problems handling El Casador de Sangre who's ruthless mean and vicious massive chops right across the chest of Juventud Guerrero here look at the size of El Casador de Sangre trying to run right into Juventud Guerrero but Juventud goes in for the massive clothesline and another one the third time possibly a charm he just took the big man right off his feet immediately going for the pin here will Juventud Guerrero get this he does not Hoovy calling for the famous Hoovy driver here will he be able to pick up the 275 pound El Casador de Sangre massive chop right to the chest goes to suplex him transitions rolls him up lateral press goes for the pin and gets it El Casador de Sangre just beat Juventud Guerrera will be seeing El Casador de Sangre facing off against Sabu at PCW's Ultra Event on January 10th in LA for his American debut. That's the Blood Hunter, aka El Casador de Sangre, who's been making quite a name for himself here. Make sure you follow the Hannibal TV on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, 